to be either smoking and non-smoking. <laughs> <laughs> if you say it, you go to the non-smoking. Non if, you, uh, if you're not saved, you go to the smoke. Now, I'm going to tell you something about the smoking. If we complaining about this people, oh. Oh, it's really hot there. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was one of the motivators that got me to be saved. So I don't like this heat. And when I was told about how hot it was there and read it in the Bible, I said, well, that's not the place for me. <laughs> now uh, most people don't like like for me to say that, but I tell them I didn't get saved because I loved the Lord. I didn't even know the Lord. I got saved for personal reasons. Dodging heat. <laughs> now, once, I, once I got saved, I developed my relationship with the Lord. I'm being honest with you. Right. And I and I have scripture to back it up because it says not that we love him, but that he first loved us. Amen. 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 Okay, then we talked about parental influence. We said that a lot of times <laughs> the way that we were brought up could have opened doors for fear to be in our lives. We talked about an overprotective parent and we talked about a dominating parent. Both of those can cause fear to be in a child's life. Right? We also talked about a traumatic experience. Maybe somebody had a traumatic experience one time and fear came in and you never dealt with it. So you brought it up into your adulthood or you kept it with you. And the purpose of this is to help you identify certain situations, you, you may not have experienced none of these, okay? But if you did, it would help you identify them, and then, okay, I need to close the door in that area. Mm -hmm. Then we talked about a negative attitude, a negative thinking pattern. Mm -hmm. That's a defeatist attitude. That's a victim mentality. Mm -hmm. We are not victims, excuse me, we're not victims, we're victorious. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, we overcome the world through our faith. Yes, right. Our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 37, that we are more than conquerors. Yes. Now, most of us would just, like me, would just settle with just being a conqueror. Yes. But it says we are more than conquerors. Yes. So that tells me that we are victors and not victims. That's right. A lot of times we feel like we are victims because we allow the world and people in the world to identify us or to give us our identity. Well, if you go by the world's judgment, see, the world looks at popularity and money and all these things that causes a person to be uh, valuable. Well, in God's eyes, everyone is valuable. Right? And it's not based on your wealth. It's not based on where you live, what you drive, how you look. Right. It's based on your relationship with Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what makes us victorious and not victims. All right. Then last week we started talking about guilt. Guilt is another thing that can cause fear to be in our lives. And we're going to finish the teaching on guilt tonight. Last week we defined guilt as a feeling of responsibility or remorse for some offense, crime, or wrong, whether real or imagined. Even if you haven't really done anything, if you think you have, guilt can come in. Amen. All right? We said that uh, fear causes, I mean, uh, guilt causes fear in man today just as it did in Adam and Eve in the garden. And last week we read Genesis chapter 3 where we've seen how they disobeyed, how Adam disobeyed God and fear came in, guilt came in because he called himself hiding from God, but God knew where he was all the time. Alright? We also said that guilt would cause a person to become so fearful that they will run and hide although no one may be after them. Mm -hmm. yep. And we read Proverbs 28 and 1 where it says the wicked flee when no one pursues but the righteous is bold as a lion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what that means is if you're not guilty, if you don't feel like you're guilty of anything, then you have a boldness about it. But if you have any guilt at all, it causes you to hide and run from others. Are y'all all right with that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. We said a guilty conscience imagines <laughs> accusers everywhere while a clear conscience has boldness to face everyone, including God. When someone feels guilty, especially if they did something that they shouldn't have done, a lot of times what they do, they stay away from the church. They think, 
by not coming to church they are they, they're hiding but you're not hiding per se from God you may be hiding from the from your brothers and sisters but God knows every, knows where you are at all times mm -hmm. and when you do something wrong that's not the time to run from God that's the time to run to God He's our help all right but the enemy See, what guilt does, guilt allows the enemy to come in and he's constantly feeding your mind. He's constantly putting those thoughts there about people talking about you. And they don't love you. And God is mad with you. So you got to learn how to cast those thoughts down. Mm -hmm. uh, Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says, Casting down imagination of every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and yeah. bringing every thought yeah. captive. Mm -hmm. What that says is when those thoughts come and it's not from God, you have to cast them down. Well, how do you cast them down? You can't cast a thought down with a thought. You have to speak. Yeah. If you speak, whenever you start speaking, whatever thought is in your mind has to hush to hear what you're saying. Yeah. If you, if a good example is a, let's, 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 let's do a quick experiment here. I want everybody in their mind when I tell you to, to start counting from from one to ten, okay? Start now in your mind. Now I say, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. What happens to you count? Stop. 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 Hear what your mouth had to say. Well, that's how you deal with thoughts. That's how you cast down thoughts. Yes, Lord. When those thoughts come, you speak what the word of God says. Thank you. And what happens is you replace that thought that's there with what God's word says. Yeah. See, words create thoughts. So when those thoughts of the enemy come, you start saying what God says, and you say what God says until what God says becomes more real to you than what the devil says. Mm -hmm. right. You may have to say it all day long. See, we say it one or two times and stop. The devil's going to keep nagging at you. you right. got to keep speaking. That's how Jesus defeated the enemy. When, when the Bible said he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was tempted in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he defeated Satan by saying, it is written. Rich. Rich. Yeah. He was Rich. speaking the word. You have to speak the word. Right. In uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, Jesus said, take no thought, Satan. He told us, he gave us the key right there to how you take a thought. Yeah. He said, you take a thought through what you say. Right. So if the devil comes and he's feeding these thoughts to you and you say what the devil is saying, you've now taken what he said. Yeah. Right. Okay, you've now taken it means that you've taken it for yourself. You possess it. And through that, he can, he can come in your life and, and cause fear and condemnation and all that stuff to influence you. All right? Amen. Y'all all right with that? Amen. All right. Um, a guilty conscience, like I say, imagine accuses uh, everywhere while a clear conscience has boldness to face everyone, including God. John said, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. That's 1 John 3, 21. This is a principle that cannot be violated without producing fear. When we sin, our conscience reminds us of our relationship with God. That's why guilt comes in. And if you don't know who you are and what Christ has done for you concerning sin, then that guilt can overpower you. But once you know who you are in Christ, and once you know that all sins, past, present, and future, are taken care of, then you won't allow guilt to come in. He can't bring condemnation on you. The penalty for your sin has already been taken count. That's already been taken care of. We don't owe God a penalty on our sin at all that Jesus is taking care of. That's good news. So that see, that should help you when you mess up, because I'm going to tell you, there are going to be times you mess up. Our, our biggest challenge is people. Okay, People challenge us, and most of the time it's the people right close to us. It's our family members, it's our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers. Those are the ones that cause and gives us the biggest challenge. And there are times when you may lose it. You know, you can, you know, I've seen the most humblest person snap. The only one that I've seen is real humble that hasn't snapped yet, and that's and that's Arla. I haven't seen Arla snap. <laughs> she has such, I haven't seen her snap. <laughs> but I've seen humble people snap before. You know, even I'm saying, you can push a person so long 
until they go off on them. Yes, you ever sir. seen a dog when he's real scary, he got his tail between his legs? Yeah. That dog would run from anybody, but put him in a coma. He's coming out that coma if he has to bite you. Okay. So, so some people, even though you're nice to them, even though you're considerate to them, a lot of times they yeah. just keep pushing. They just keep pushing. You know, some people take your kindness for weakness, and you know, people gonna take advantage of you. We live in that kind of world, even family members. And what happens is, if we don't, if we don't learn how to deal with our anger, we go off. Yeah. Okay. But then what happens once you go off, and then you start feeling guilty about it. Yeah. Well, what you have to know is, okay, I missed it this time. Next time this happens, I'll be victorious over it. But I thank you, Lord, that I'm forgiven. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And and it's good to say thank you, Lord, that I'm forgiven thank because you. when you say thank you, you're now reminding yourself that you just received something. Yep. And what you received was forgiveness. Because if you don't if you don't understand that you have received forgiveness, what happens is we start going back after we thank God or ask God for forgiveness, however we do it. We'll go back five minutes later begging, oh please Lord, please forgive. I'm so sorry. Well he forgave you already, but it's you that haven't forgiven yourself. Yeah. So when you say thank you, it helps your conscious, your mind to understand that, hey, I just received something. What did I receive? Forgive me. So I'm forgiven for that so I can move on. That that, that no longer has me in bondage. Mm -hmm. That 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 particular situation where I messed up no longer has me in bondage because I know I'm forgiven for it. Amen. 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 All right. When we sin, like I say, our conscience reminds us of our relationship with God, and if we don't know, or if we don't understand what Christ's sacrifice has done for us in this area of guilt and sin, and with it comes all the negative feelings and desires that causes us to fear. I want to read uh, 1 John 3.21 out of the Amplified. I like how he puts it. Enhancement here. You know, <laughs> help me enhance the words. First uh, John chapter three verse twenty one. It says, "And beloved, if our consciences, our hearts, do not accuse us, if they do not make us feel guilty and condemn us, we have confidence." complete assurance and boldness before God. So what John said here is that our conscience can call I mean our conscience can cause us to feel guilty. It can cause us to feel condemned. Yes, sir. That's the key. It's, all that is caught up in your feelings. Uh -huh. The Bible teaches us that we walk by faith right. and not by feelings, our sight. Feelings is in the category of sight. So I can't go by how I feel. So sometimes I don't even feel like a Christian. Right. I'm being honest. I don't feel saved all the time. My mind is saying, because, especially if I done said something or did something I ain't got no business, my mind is saying, you have faith, so faith doesn't do that. Yeah. The devil is speaking that. You know? But it's not based on my feelings. It's nope. based on what the word is. Right. So we have to submit, we have to practice, we have to discipline ourselves to submit to the word. Thank you. And this is an everyday thing. You have to learn how to die to self. Paul Amen. said in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 31, I believe it is, he said that I die daily. Yeah. He wasn't talking about a physical death. He was talking about dying to self. Yeah. We, I'm telling you, you got to die to self daily because when, whenever self exalts itself, <laughs> we end up off being, being led by our thoughts, our feelings, and then condemnation can come in. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Now, our conscience reminding us of our relationship with God when we sin has often been interpreted wrongly by psychiatrists who blame religion for creating guilt complexes in people in which they said produced fear. Now, this is a true story I'm going to share with you. Mm -hmm. A pastor told a story. He said a few years ago his family doctor who at that time was not a Christian, made the following statement to him. The doctor said, You ministers, including my saintly old father, so the doctor's father he was talking about too, he was a minister, do irreparable damage to the emotional life of men by preaching the gospel. Wow. By preaching the gospel. The pastor said he questioned the doctor's reason for such a statement. 
The pastor said that the doctor responded by saying that he, the doctor, took his internship in a mental institution and the overwhelming majority of those people there had a religious background. Uh-oh. And that's what they had, religion. religion. What we have is a relationship. Yeah. When you operate in religion, yes, you will be in bondage. But that's what religion does. It puts you in bondage. Right. Religion say women can't wear pants. Religion say women can't wear makeup. Religion say women can't preach. See, it puts you in bondage. But a relationship with God sets you free. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. All right. The doctor said that the people were there because of fear induced by guilt complexes. So he was identifying their guilt with the preaching of the gospel. The pastor said the next day he attended a minister's meeting where a Christian psychologist gave a lecture on pastoral counseling. The pastor said during the question period he told the Christian psychologist about the conversation he had with his doctor. He said he asked the psychologist for his opinion. And and, and the psychologist gave a real simple answer. The psychologist said, people have guilt complexes because they're guilty. (laughs) That's why they got guilt complexes. They done did something and they're guilty. Mm. But even so, if you have did something and and you are a believer, you don't have to be overcome by guilt. Because whatever you've done, the penalty for what you've done has already been paid by Christ. But religion doesn't preach that. Religion still preach that you owe something. Yeah. Religion says you got to do something to get God to love you. Religion says you got to do something to get God to forgive you. That's what Brother Chuck has been teaching on for the longest. Yeah. That we're not, we're, we're, we're not to do works to receive God's forgiveness. We're not to do works to receive a relationship with God. But we do do good works. But religion twists it all up and have you thinking that you got to do something to make God happy. God is pleased with us through Christ. Mm-hmm. When, when God looks at you and I, he's not looking at us head on. He's looking at us through the blood yes, of Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus is a stiff. You remember how you used to yeah. stiff flowers mm-hmm. to get all the bad out? Well, yeah. Jesus' blood is a stiff. It gets all the bad out. So when God looks at you and I, he sees the good and not the bad. He sees the the finished work and not the work in progress. All right? Are y'all all all right with that? When people commit a wrong, and if they don't receive the forgiveness that Jesus the sacrifice has provided, and if they don't forgive themselves, they can be overcome by a guilt complex. As believers, we don't have to be overcome by guilt, for God through Christ Jesus has declared those of us who are in Christ not guilty. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, and we're going to look at verse 1. Thank you, Lord. Whenever you start to feel condemned, you need to turn to this verse and meditate on this verse. Meditate on this chapter. Okay. Yeah. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. When you get there, say amen. 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 It reads, Paul says, there is therefore later. Now. 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 When is now? Now. now. Present. Right? Right now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, yeah. but according to the to the spirit. So Paul said, when you're in Christ, there is no condemnation. There's no guilt. God is not judging you guilty. You know what? If nothing else causes you to, uh, to, to recognize your freedom, that should. So you got people judging you guilty. You got people giving you their opinion about you. But you know what? If you the only way a person's opinion can affect you is if you value their opinion. Right. Mm-hmm. If you don't value a person's opinion, it, it, it cannot affect you. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we value men's opinion above God's word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have to <laughs> we have to put God above man's opinion. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. When we receive Christ, we are planted in God's family. 
You can find that in First John, I mean John chapter one verse twelve. And therefore we are no longer held guilty. In the Old Testament, when they sacrificed a lamb, the the purer the lamb, the more of the person's the people's sin was forgiven. Mm. Well, the lamb that was sacrificed for us can't get any purity. Right. So the Amen. condition of Christ with God is your condition mm -hmm. with God. Amen. Thank you. Think about that. Right. Right. He is he is sinless. He is not held guilty. You are not held guilty. Mm -hmm. The only person who put you in guilt is you. Because you allow people opinion of, uh, of the devil to speak to you and tell you that you're guilty. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Jesus himself said that when we believe in him, we are not condemned. You don't have to turn to John 3.18. Jesus said, he who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the only begotten Son of God. When we believe in Christ, he makes us completely right with God. However, the one who does not believe not only misses eternal life, but is also condemned already. God is not condemning him. He's already condemned. See, we have to realize there are laws that are already in effect. So if you go against those laws, there are consequences. Right. For instance, the law of gravity is already in effect, right? right? So if someone climbs up to the top of this building and jump off uh -oh. a human and break something, they can't blame God. God trying to teach me and teach me something. Now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's just dumb enough to climb up there and try to jump off. And you got the consequences of your choice. Right. There's, there are laws that are already in effect in this world. And when you go against them, then there are consequences. But God is not doing anything. We're, we're in the dispensation of grace. And people need to know what grace is. That's God's unmerited favor. He's not yeah. judging you. He's judged Christ. Already, so he's not judging you and I. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, one more point that I want to bring out with Romans eight and one. It says, "There is now, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit." Amen. The word "walk" means to live. When you allow, when it talks about flesh, I need to say this: it's not talking about this; it's talking about a way of thinking that's contrary to the word of God. Yeah. So, when you operate your life by your feelings by your thought life that's contrary to the word of God, you open yourself up to receive condemnation from the devil. Because he operates through your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. So anytime you are led by those, you are now making yourself vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. And yes, you will experience a feel guilt. But when you are led by the spirit, by the word of God, he can't penetrate that. And you won't experience guilt because once you mess up, you recognize who you are yes. in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that is a child of God. Mm -hmm. And if you're a child of God, then you're not guilty. Because mm -hmm. you couldn't be a child of God and still be held guilty. That's right. Thank you. All right? So don't allow guilt to come in. Yes, you may mess up. All right. You didn't say the right thing to your wife. You didn't say the right thing to your husband. Your, your boss made you so mad you walked off the job. Uh -oh. That's dumb. <laughs> you know, you, yeah. I mean, 